In many cases, but not all, thyroid eye disease is caused by an over or underactive thyroid. To treat thyroid eye disease, we also need to treat the thyroid. When patients have eye problems to do with the thyroid, the role of endocrinologists like myself is to keep the thyroid as stable as possible. That means to keep the level of thyroid hormones in the normal range. So the thyroid gland makes hormones called thyroid hormones, uh, which are called T4 and T3, and they control the metabolism of the body and they in fact probably affect almost all parts of the body. So when you have high levels of thyroid hormone, your metabolism is increased in rate. So that means that you lose weight, your heart goes faster, you sweat more, you feel shaky, you feel anxious. It's like you're being driven. Uh, and uh, a lot of people, you might think that would be a good thing, but it's actually an unpleasant feeling. They don't sleep well at night. They feel they can't wind down. Uh, and it also has effects on the rest of the body too. For example, on the bones, it'll thin out the bones if the uh, cause osteoporosis, if the thyroid hormone level is very high. And the opposite is true if the thyroid hormone level is too low, that you'd slow up, you'd put on weight, you'd feel cold rather than feeling the heat, you'd think more slowly and you'd sleep more. So it, in that sense, it keeps a balance of how the body is metabolizing. Well, there are many different reasons for the thyroid gland to not function normally. Uh, the main group is either that little bits of the thyroid gland overgrow, that doesn't mean a cancer, it's just little bits overgrow called nodules, and they can start to make thyroid hormone when they shouldn't do, because the thyroid is normally very tightly controlled by the brain, by the pituitary gland in the brain, which monitors how much thyroid hormone is being made and releases its own hormone to control the thyroid. In the condition uh, which affects the eyes, which is Graves' disease, and we call it Graves' disease not because you end up in the grave, but because it's Dr. Graves who first described it. That's a different process. This is an immune disorder. And what happens there is that the body, for some reason, makes an antibody. And this antibody stimulates the thyroid gland. In fact, it behaves like the hormone from the pituitary gland, from the brain, to switch on the thyroid gland. But because it's an antibody, it's not under any control and it continues to drive the thyroid gland to more and more activity. So it's really a mistake of the immune system making a reaction against your own body. There are three main treatments for an overactive thyroid gland. They're all good and they all have goods and bads, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, and I often uh, for my patients, I give them all three options, but consider what would suit them best. So the first is tablet treatment. And the tablets that we use are usually called carbimazole or sometimes PTU or propyl thiuracil. And what these tablets do is they stop the thyroid gland from making hormone. They don't affect the immune process, they just stop it from making extra hormone. The tablets are relatively inexpensive and pretty safe and most people don't have a problem with it. In terms of side effects though, uh, about one in 10 people will have a side effect and the most common one is either joint discomfort, joint aches or pains, or a rash, itching, or a sort of hives type rash. Neither of these are dangerous and you stop them if they have problems with the tablet, you can switch to the other tablet. There are however, two dangerous side effects which are very rare with these tablets. And the most important one is that it can affect the bone marrow and that's probably about one in 200 people. So I've only really seen a handful of cases. And what happens here is that uh, the, the first sign that you notice is soreness in the mouth. The sores actually in the mouth. Not just a mouth ulcer but sores usually on the top of the mouth, the hard palate or towards the back. We think well that's unusual, that's uncomfortable. If that happens, you must stop the tablet the same day, whether it's Bank Holiday Monday or Christmas Day or whatever it is, and get your blood checked to make sure the blood cells are not low in your blood and it hasn't affected the bone marrow. If the blood check is okay, then it's nothing to do with that and it's just a sore mouth and you can carry on taking the tablets. But if you don't stop the tablets, then it can seriously affect the bone marrow and you can be at risk from serious infections. So that's something to be aware of, and I normally give people a warning card about that. And the warning card says what I've just said, 
for patients, but it also has information for doctors, because often if you turn up at a casualty department and say, I've got sores in my mouth and I'm on this tablet, they go, so what? I don't understand. Because it's rare enough that a lot of doctors wouldn't know that side effect. But it's important that they understand they need to do a very simple blood test to make sure that the white blood cells are okay in your blood. The other rare side effect is to affect the liver, and that's more common with the PTU, the propylthiouracil tablet, and that uh, appears as jaundice. So if you were to develop yellow jaundice, uh, then that's, you'd have to stop that tablet. And if that happened, if either of the serious side effects happened, you cannot take that tablet again, you'd have to have another treatment. So that's the medical treatment. Now, if you're gonna take those tablets, the normal course is 18 months. And the reason for that is after about 18 months, if you stop the tablets, you've got about a 50-50 chance of, of the overactivity not coming back, which is a reasonable chance. Looked at the other way, you've got a 50% chance that it will come back over the next year or few years. So it's not necessarily a permanent treatment, though for some people it works very well in the long term. It almost always works though to control the thyroid and to improve your symptoms. So it can be used in that way as well. The dose of the tablet is important because if you take too much for too long, you'll become underactive because the thyroid can't make any hormone at all. So that needs to be carefully adjusted and monitored with blood tests. I said there were three treatments, so let's go to the third one before we deal with the second one. It sounds rather odd, but the third one is to have an operation and in which you remove 95% of the thyroid gland. Now you might say, why don't you just remove exactly the right amount? And the reason is we don't know what the right amount is and what you don't want is two operations. So what we do is remove too much of the thyroid gland and then you're gonna need thyroid hormone tablets. The advantage of that treatment is that as soon as the operation is complete, the treatment is complete and then you have thyroid hormone tablets and there's no more treatment after that. So it's straightforward. Disadvantage, well, it's an operation. So you have to have an anesthetic. You're usually in hospital for two or three days. There's a scar in the low part of the neck, which over about a year becomes a white line that you lose into the skin creases. But for the first year, it's fairly obvious that there's a red line there where you've had the surgery. If you have the surgery done by people who do it quite often, the risks are low. The main risks are that it could affect the nerve to the voice, so you could end up with a hoarse voice afterwards. And it may affect the calcium glands, which are behind the thyroid, the parathyroid glands, and in which case you'd need calcium tablets. And the surgeon will discuss that with you if you went for that option. So what about the second option? Well, that's radioactive iodine treatment. People often think this sounds like Chernobyl or Hiroshima, but in fact, it's a treatment we've been using for over 60 years, so we know an awful lot about it. It's been used since the 1940s. And that's because, as I mentioned, the thyroid is the main gland of the body that uses iodine. So if we give a little bit of radioactivity in the iodine and it's taken as a drink or as a tablet, that goes straight to the thyroid gland and it knocks it out from the inside. So it's, if you like, it's a painless operation. Can it be as good as that? Well, the advantages are that when it works, it's a permanent treatment. But it's usually going to knock the thyroid gland out completely, so you will need thyroid hormone tablets afterwards. Uh, a disadvantage is that it's relatively slow. It can take up to six months for it to work. It's only one treatment though. It's painless, and that's an advantage. In some cases, probably less than 10 or 20% of cases, you need a second treatment after six months if it hasn't fully worked. The main concern is that in a small percentage, probably 10 or 15% of people, it seems to possibly stir the eyes up. So it may increase the risk or worsen thyroid eye disease. For that reason, we don't use it in people who've got bad eyes or where the eye disease is active. And if we're going to use it because the others are not, other treatments are not an option, we give steroids at the same time to stop that reaction happening. Is there any part of a patient's diet that can affect the thyroid? There are two that seem to be important. One is iodine, and the thyroid is the main gland in the body that uses iodine because the thyroid hormones have iodine in them. So if you take lots of extra iodine, and that's typically in iodine supplements or in seafood or seaweed-derived supplements, and you need to check a lot of the mineral supplements you can get from shops for the iodine content, 
those things can actually make the thyroid activity worse because it feel like it's putting fuel on the fire. Equally, a low iodine diet can make you underactive on the thyroid. So all we suggest is that you take a sensible approach to this, don't take extra and don't take none at all. One other thing that's emerging about the diet is selenium. And this is another metal, in fact, in, uh, and if you like, it's a vitamin element or mineral really, that helps the enzymes in the thyroid. Uh, people often ask where does selenium come from in the diet and actually the strongest source is Brazil nuts but there are other sources as well and that it seems that extra selenium is probably helpful to the thyroid and helpful to the eye disease but at present it's not clear whether that's something we should be strongly recommending or not.